Hi, I'm Dana. And I'm Cheryl. I'm from Strawberry Weddings and Events. Today, we're going to be discussing wedding budget when you have 100,000 Rand to spend. We'll start with your venue that definitely needs to be um, booked well in advance because there are lots of weddings taking place and I would suggest that you have a wedding venue that includes in-house catering. Try to find a venue that's not a blank canvas, rather a venue that's got your tables, your chairs, your cutlery, crockery, perhaps even linen. Then you only have to outsource some decor for the tables, maybe a few underplates and then some lighting. And if I can just get back to the catering, I would suggest that you do a buffet rather than plated because plated can become very expensive per head. And then when um, proceeding with the wedding attire, now with um, lockdown and the situation that many businesses have gone through, there's been lots of sales and really good specials when purchasing a wedding dress. There are lots of Facebook groups that are actually selling secondhand wedding dresses. This again is a wonderful way um, for you to save costs. Again, you must also understand that sometimes it's more cost effective to purchase a dress rather than hire. So Absolutely. always weigh up both options. And with regards to bridesmaids dresses, I feel that you shouldn't put the pressure on yourself as a bride to pay for everyone's bridesmaids dresses, especially you if you're having three to five bridesmaids. Again, I would ask that your bridesmaids, if they feel comfortable, to rather purchase their own dress. Make sure it's a color scheme that they can reuse that dress again, so it wouldn't be seen as a waste of money. So when it comes to your um, videography and photography, yes. it's very important. I mean, these pictures and videos will last a lifetime. You're gonna show your kids one day. Mm -hmm. It's very exciting. With um, videography, our industry friends are gonna kill us that are videographers. However, Sorry. It's a nice to have, but is it necessary? So let's first perhaps work out, um, let's first um, secure a photographer. Yes. Should you have a little bit more budget, budget towards the over. end? Then let's get in touch with I your videographer agree. and say, you know, do we have X, Y, and Z yes. available? When it comes to your um, DJ and entertainment, this falls around 10% of your wedding budget. So. From our experience, um, a DJ can make or break a wedding. So make sure that the DJ that you do choose has got referrals, contact them before booking. Again, your DJ can do the music for ceremony, pre-drinks and reception. A live element like a band or a trio is wonderful, but it is costly. When it comes to your hair and makeup, that falls around 5% of your wedding budget. Um, another nice way that you can save is perhaps just for the bride to yes. get her hair and makeup done. Should the bridesmaids want to get their hair and makeup done, this should fall or can fall on a cost that they can pay for. I Again, agree. you also, you are a mother of the bride. I know. And you wanted to get your hair and makeup done, so you can always chat with the bride. Um, you know, you can chat with your mom and ask her if she would like to get her hair and makeup done. And then you just focus on the two of you um, for your hair and makeup. So the budget for a marriage officer should be about 2.5% because there's a lot of paperwork that goes into uh, arranging all the necessary documents and then they have to go to uh, home affairs like in Paul or um, Caledon or Hermana. So it's, it's completely all different than it used to be in the, in the old days. So the, the paperwork is a lot and I'm telling you that because I'm married to a pastor and I've seen exactly all his preparation and what he's got to do to prepare for a wedding. So your on the day coordinators, that will be about 2% of your wedding, wedding budget. Plan. So we have to first stress that a lot of the times we get inquiries and they say our venue includes a venue manager. So a venue manager and an on the day coordinator are two completely two different, different things. People. Yes. So the difference being is that we make sure that the actual running of your day goes smoothly. And who's lighting the candles, who's yes, meeting the marriage yes, officer when he arrives, who's yes. assisting the MC, who's assisting you with your timeline, Correct. wedding function sheet, Correct. dietary requirements, seating plan, the list goes on. And with, if I can just yes, jump in yeah. there, um, Brian, you must remember that, that, that you only get married once, let's hope. 
and uh, that day must be extremely special for you where you just worrying about your makeup and your hair and you're not worrying about the suppliers that are dropping off things or who's being who's late so a, co a coordinator is vitally important to have because whatever happens at the venue and if something does go wrong you never know about it because yes. we make sure that we take anything that's not happening the way it should we take and we deal with it so your day should be all about you and the, the groom as well it should be all about yes. him so and Cheryl how many agree? shoes have you fixed I've, I've fixed plenty <laughs> shoes already let me tell you we've got yeah. a um, we've toolbox. got a toolbox full of tricks so yes. and as much as you want to try um, we've heard also stories of um, my mom or my best friend or my maid of honor she'll run the day or she'll assist with it it doesn't happen they're no. busy with photos they're taking selfies they're enjoying the day. Um, yes. It's it's not always possible to rely on a family And the tequilas and the vino is very nice at a specific time. So she might start off as your um, bridesmaid, um, but it's difficult to find a three quarters through the day or into the evening. By the end of the night. Yeah. <laughs> when it comes to your accommodation, this falls around 2% of your wedding budget. So depending on the wedding venue that you've chosen, a lot of the times they include a two night stay. So either a night before while the bride and her bridal squad get ready and then the night of the wedding for the bride and groom. Other times venues will just include a free night stay for the night of the wedding. Yeah. So again, if you are um, getting married um, nearby or perhaps you've got a destination wedding, I would let your guests know ahead of time on your invites or your wedding website of suggested accommodation nearby. Allow your guests to pay for their own accommodation. I agree. I, fully I wouldn't agree. feel offended should no. someone ask me to pay for my own accommodation. A wedding is very expensive. so. Don't feel that it's you're offending a guest by them sorting out their own accommodation. And also guests have got enough time to save for accommodation, whether it's six months planning of a wedding or a year planning of a wedding. Uh, they've got enough time to source accommodation and save and pay for themselves. I definitely agree. Yeah. With your wedding stationery, this falls around 1% of your budget. So what we're finding now is that um, brides are going a lot more electronic. Um, a lot more eco-friendly and as well with the stationery we can't tell you how many times have we thrown away the name tags the menu cards when we break down the next morning people, programs yeah, as well people don't take the stuff home um, it looks absolutely beautiful for photos and for the first 20 minutes as they enter the reception venue thereafter it's money down the drain so what I would suggest is um, rather just stick for your electronic save the dates and wedding websites and then um, just for the wedding ceremony, let's do a nice um, wedding welcome board. And then again, we can do instead of 100 or 50 printed menu cards, let's do um, one menu because it will be a buffet menu, which we can position near the buffet station and, yes. and a seating plan as well. And, and the seating plan or the welcome sign is beautiful. I would suggest having something like that instead of all the other bitty pieces and that we can always reuse again. Guest favours, I would say for a wedding, um, definitely do away with guest favours because we've seen it too many times when a bride really goes out of her way and she buys some very nice things and it's left on the table because people get carried away with the wedding, um, they leave it on the table, they forget so it's a waste, it's an expense. Um, and it actually breaks our hearts when we see the things yes. just lying around like that. So Cheryl, let's discuss um, weddings versus elopements. Yeah. So okay. your elopements, that would be more cost effective because um, it's a smaller amount of people with um, lockdown weddings now, um, also a lot, a lot smaller, which again, it is more cost effective. So venues now are half capacity. So instead of you having to budget for 100 guests, you're now budgeting for 50, which is wonderful. And now you have all the guests that you really want there. <laughs> yes, and you can maybe opt for a, a, a picnic wedding which is also lovely and it's, it's, it's uh, intimate. Um, it gives you a lot of chance to spend more time with your guests. So that's also quite a nice uh, wedding I do. idea. Yes. And then with regards to um, morning weddings versus your evening, um, again, your morning wedding would be is more- a lot cheaper. Yes, because it's not gonna be dancing. You don't really need lighting and candles because it's in the morning or towards brunch. Again, you're also saving on your catering. Absolutely. 
Um, with um, weekday weddings, we love weekday weddings because... We do, we um, do. Because also the, the venues are offering such wonderful rates now for weekday weddings. But a lot of the times we get brides and they say, but they feel bad, what do they do? The, um, you know, can they ask their guests to, to take a day off? And we say yes. If you let your guests know ahead of time, remember a wedding only starts normally between 3 and 4 o'clock. Yeah. So if they're taking a half day, Absolutely. is it really yes. that bad? No, it's not that bad. You're just putting a day's leave or half a day's leave. Yes. And you obviously as a bride, you'd give them ample time. So it can be done timelessly. Yes, so we say yes for weekday weddings. Lovely brides, we hope that this video was informative for you and that we help put your mind at ease. Please follow us on pinkbook.co.za. And that's where you'll find the mother and daughter team.